And then suddenly, for some reason, I'm going to go with you tonight. And when he went, and it was during the prayer service, it was the prayer service, he felt something warm inside that he never felt before. And became a Christian. And so this doctor, who was thinking about ending it, went to the service with her husband, and Christ came into her heart. And there was joy. I don't know how our emergency rooms in Philadelphia and the surrounding area, how the doctors and the nurses, the police and teachers, everything, deal with such violence that are going on. On Saturday afternoon, I turned on the television and said from Friday afternoon to Saturday afternoon, six more shootings in Philly and several more people killed. When is it going to stop? When is it going to stop? We need Jesus. We need Jesus in our hearts. And we need to believe during the difficult times that the Lord will provide the way. The question is, where is God? Let me keep your eyes. Where is God? Where is this Jesus that you're talking about? Well, a man named Tom Glasser wrote about the day he and his classmates were waiting for their ROT instructor to arrive for class at the Texas Christian University. One of his fellow officers in training said, since we usually wait five minutes for a graduate assistant, 10 minutes for an assistant professor, and 15 minutes for a full professor, <clears throat> how long should we wait for this lieutenant colonel? Well, just outside the classroom, there was a gruff voice that answered, until he gets there. Think about that for a minute. Until he gets there. Remember in school when you would sit there and the teacher was late, and you're looking at your watch, and you're saying, you know, well, maybe we're not going to have class today, and then suddenly the teacher shows up. Well, this is what Mary and Martha were asking of Jesus. When are you going to show up? If you were here, he would have been alive. But no, you weren't here, and he died. And what happened was a great miracle. You see, in the raising of Lazarus, Jesus is showing us God's ultimate plan to release us from the power of death and the grave. Jesus replied, your brother will rise again. And Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me will live, and even though they die, and whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? You see, she was talking about the final days, that resurrection. She wasn't thinking about the present moment and that resurrection. You see, we have to come to grips of our faith. In the 1950s, a pastor named David Roberts delivered a sermon in which he said, once I heard a man say, I spent 20 years trying to come to terms with my doubts. Then one day it dawned on me that I had better come to terms with my faith. Now I have passed from the agony of questions I cannot answer to the agony of the answers I cannot escape. And it's a great relief. And that brings us to the final way in which Lazarus' story mirrors the story of salvation. In the rising of Lazarus, Jesus sacrificed his own life to release Lazarus from the power of death. You see, for our scripture lesson this morning, as we prepare for Palm Sunday, Jesus knew within a few short days he would be going into Jerusalem. He knew knew that he was facing death. 
but yet through the last couple of weeks of these individuals and their encounter with Jesus, in different ways, faith was restored to these individuals. We are two weeks away from Easter, two weeks away from celebrating the most important event in human history. And I pray that in these last days, you have seen Jesus through the eyes of Nicodemus, the Samaritan woman, the blind man, and Lazarus. I pray that you have seen his truth, his light, and the power, and his love. And I pray that you have wrestled with the question of who Jesus really is. I believe as did Martha, in spite of her grief and her questions, that he is the Messiah, the Son of God. If you have come to believe this too, please pray this morning and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and find the new life that he wants so much to give to you and me. Let us pause for a few moments and reach out to our Lord. Let us pray. If we can accept in our heart that Jesus is the Son of God, our Lord and Savior, if we can lift up our sin and ask for forgiveness, our Lord will embrace us as a new person, a reborn person, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our closing hymn is Thine Be the Glory, page 308.
establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Amen. Thank you.